Whatever stage you're at with your trading, it's important to stop and gain perspective before planning your next move. Take a break from the charts and join in the discussion with our hosts, Jason Greystone and Akil Stokes, as they share insights, opinions and expertise on all things trading. Grab a coffee, pull up a chair and join the Trader Coffee Break. Hi right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Trader Coffee Break. I'm Jason Greystone. I'm Akil Stokes. And Akil Stokes has got his voice Ooh. back. That sounded <laughs> good. Right, yeah. That did sound good. You've gone even more Barry White since you've uh, since I, you heard about I know. Right? <laughs> Sed- seductive and sensual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if this is the first time you're listening, this is where we talk all things trading. Grab a coffee, grab a water, or a lem sip if you're in a in a kill situation. And uh, and we're going to talk for not too long today because obviously there's a bit of a strain on the throat. But we're going to have a little conversation about a trading topic. And if you're joining us um, in the chat, which is over here, um, let us know your thoughts as you join along. And if you, this is your first time listening to this channel, definitely uh, subscribe to the channel and take a look around at all the other videos on this, uh, on this channel because there's loads. And we're going to keep building this thing out uh, for the years to come. So amazing. So this week, um, we decided to talk about a systematic process into trading, how to develop consistency in your trading, um, because... There seems to be a lot of people who think they know what the markets are going to do, and they think that it's okay to develop a a, a trading system based on their thoughts and feelings and emotions. And whilst that is, I'm not saying you can't do that, right? I'm not saying it's impossible, but I hope you've got a lot of time and a lot of money to then invest into your trading journey because you're going to have to take years and years and years before you can develop a mental consistency that you've kind of nailed down as a trading system. Um, On top of that, there's then there's maintaining an edge and all the rest of it that you just, you know, you're not tracking, you're kind of it. So I want to talk about that. And I guess the best way to kick it off is just to kind of explain what some of the problems are if you if you don't have a systematic approach to the markets. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would say, and, and I was, uh, I'm like, I guess it is possible to do it, but like the, the chances are so yeah, slim. very slim. Kind of going off a right. feel, and we always say that you, you can you can build intuition, or intuition is earned yeah. through experience. But will you go broke by the time you gain that experience if you're not starting with a, a solid place? And the answer, absolutely, most likely is is, is yeah, you'll 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 go broke. Um, but I, I think the best way to look at it, and, and this is still a problem, I don't know how many years later we've been talking about it, is you know, we have to understand you got to approach trading one of two ways, right? Are you going to be a gambler or, or, or a, I don't want to say a gambler, but a, a, a reckless gambler, emotional gambler, or are you going to treat it like a professional? And if you look at any successful business out there, every business has a business plan. Every business has a business model. Every business has a a strict protocol of what you should be doing, the process that you should be following. We talk about like the very basics of like McDonald's or fast food restaurants. And when you're flipping burgers in the back, you just can't go there and make a burger any way you want. There is a very specific protocol on how you have to make it. And it's done that way for a reason. And, and, and you know, talking about going into emotions, which and psychology, which is one of the biggest detriments of traders, when you get into a routine, when you get into a, a ritual, that helps to limit those emotional pulls as well. Yeah. So I, I think it's I, yeah. I think it's necessary. I think more people need to take it seriously. Yeah, and I, I think it's the same way that a, a pilot has a checklist, right? Uh, you know, no matter how many times you fly a plane, um, if you don't go through that checklist, then you haven't you haven't introduced a mechanical system that removes human. Uh, emotion and human error and that's really what it's there for and that's and consistency is the most important thing in consistently profitable trading so it just makes sense to have a way of consistently and and the other thing is if you're going in with the approach that I just want to have a feel for the market so I know what's going to happen then when you, when it doesn't go how you think it's going to happen, that's going to have a bigger effect on your emotions than it would a trader that does have a mechanical system because it's 
it's, it's almost attacking you. You're, you're seeing that, that as yeah. feed direct feedback to yourself rather than your system that you're developing and optimizing. So that's a, that's a recipe for disaster in my eyes. And I see, this is typically what I see when people try to become purely discretionary traders. They just go round and round in circles for years. And it's like they don't want to admit to themselves that there is a right way to learn how to trade. And because they can't admit that now, they're spiraling. And they're like, well, no, I can't. And the very thing that they want to become, they can't now become because they're too embarrassed or too, you know, they're just not swallowing their pride. And um, and they just don't want to admit that there's actually some work to do. And if you're doing that, you just you could face wasting years and years and lots of money when really you know, my advice would be to consider something that's a bit more systematic. And I think today we'll just talk through like a, a basic kind of four-step approach that we use with our traders, right? Yeah, it's a four-step approach that it's probably one of the best things I learned because it, it keeps you on track. And I know we work with traders on a regular basis, obviously. And it's funny how almost every answer involving technical analysis can come back to this process where it's like, hey, do step one, then do step two, then do step three, then do step four. And if you consistently do those four steps in a row, you're going to be on the right track. Obviously, there are, there are things that need to be added. You know, there, there are decisions that have to be made, you know, throughout like the strategy development yeah. process about, you know, how you're going to decide what opportunities you're going to look for. But what's beautiful about the process is that it can be used in any type of trading, any type of investing, any type of speculation. And it just, it, it, it keeps you on the right track and it, it kind of stops you from those kind of stop and go. They stop you from making those emotional decisions because you're dead on. I mean, so many traders think that, hey, if, if, if they win a trade, they're right and it's on them. If they lose a trade, they're wrong and it's on them. And yeah. those are these emotional yo-yos. And like, the truth is like the market doesn't care about you at all. You can have the best setup in the world. I got one setting up on Canada right now, which you may lose if you don't, uh, retrace this but if it loses like it's nothing against me personally like it's <laughs> did i follow the process and that's a uh, that's key but yeah so yeah. the four step process that we always talk about and i'll kick off the the first one if you want to explain the second one is called ipde identify predict decide execute and the first part identify for me i look at that as just taking all the trading out of it like i'm not approach i never approach a chart saying how can I find a trade? How can I find a trade? How can I find a trade? I just want to stand on the highest cliff. I want to survey the land, right? I want to do kind of my pre-work. Macro see. view. What? Yes, big macro view. What is going on? I can imagine the same way. I've never been in the military, but when you're scouting your opposition for an assignment, right? You don't just kind of run in guns blazing the war, right? <laughs> Maybe the US, I don't know. But you don't just run in guns blazing the war. Um, you kind of oversee what's going on. So for that identify part, I just want to look at the price chart. Where is price action at? Where are key levels of structure? Are there certain key price points that we're at? Um, historically, has anything happened at this level? Um, have are we, we currently bullish structure? or bearish? Yeah. Yeah. Are we, what, what's the underlying trend? I Direction. just want that information. And then that information is going to allow me to go to the next step, which is going to be which predict. Predict, yeah. And prediction is essentially taking that information and then creating a, a bias, a thesis, a prediction of where market's likely to go next and how it's likely to get there. So that's where you're looking at key levels of structure, um, habitual patterns that have happened historically. You know, what is the market doing? Where is it likely to go next? And how is it likely to get there? That's really the prediction phase. And then we go on to the decide phase, which is essentially the setups, right, Akil? Yeah, and the cool thing about the prediction phase is after you've done this and, and you've already decided it's the what side part, of the yeah. market you want to, yeah, you, do I want to be bullish or do I want to be bearish? Yeah. And to where or at where? And, and like that's yeah. the hardest part. It's already done. The decide part is going to be the easiest part because by the time you're actively trading, you should have a rules-based trading plan. So now that you know what your prediction is, trend continuation, counter trend, this, that, all you have to do is flip over that pilot's manual, like you said, and just go down, okay, trend continuation scenarios. How do I attack it? Okay, if price action yeah. does this, then I wait for that. And I'm not saying it's easy because following your rules is easier said than done, but yeah. 
the process is easy. Just literally go through your checklist and wait for what you need to uh, or to occur on the chart. And then that's how you decide how you're going to get involved. Yeah, it's essentially your toolbox, right? It's like, right, I've made my prediction of where, what can I do? Open your toolbox. What can I use in this situation? And instead of pulling out a tool, it's pulling out a set of rules like a board game instructions and going, okay, if it passes, go, I collect $200. That is literally what you're doing. And then... The, the, the last part is the execution part. So that's making sure that you know what type of orders you need to set and where. If you're front running orders to allow for spreads, where do they need to go? Where you're getting in, where you're getting out, where your stop loss is going, where your target orders are going. And you know all of that before you even place the trade. So as Akil says, all the hard work's done. So once you place those executions, the, those orders, that's it. There's no need to worry or think or overthink or doubt or change things up. That's done. Just like Akil's session there going on in the background, that's it. Like, that's that's done. His hard work's done. Yes, it might suck if he takes a loss, but it's it's just part of the process, right? And I hope it does win, by the way. <laughs> I hope so, too. Now, here's a question. So after that execution part um what would be your advice for traders I, I know what new traders are thinking right they go through this process they're feeling good they they finally get through those nerves they, they push the button they execute and then they sit there and just yeah stare at it right is, is that something you would advise or, or I, I would definitely wouldn't advise that but I, I think there's things that lead to doing that i mean if you've tested your system and you've, you're happy with it and you're trading it exactly as per your back tested rules and, and results then maybe as you're placing the trade just go to your back tested data and go right i'm expecting you know seven out of ten winners and then at least that puts you in the right frame of mind to go well this might lose you know but hey ho um but definitely don't get into the habit of staring at the screen you know if you need if you're trade if you're new to trading you're probably trading on a higher time frame anyway which i definitely would recommend um which means you don't have to test you don't have to check it that often anyway you know come back in an hour or two and um as long as there's no high impact news and things like that which should all be in your plan anyway so, so this is it's very hard to kind of to nail out to kind of bring anything to the surface that shouldn't have already been taken care of in that IPD process. And once the execution's done, you shouldn't be worrying if that makes sense. So, if you are still feeling like you need to sit in front of the trip, just go out, go for a walk. You know, go just try to get away from that and try and reaffirm that you've done everything that you should have done that is going to generate a profit over a period of time. That's, that's all I can say. Yeah. I, I think getting away is key because you're, you're probably at your highest emotional state during that yeah. period, right? You just, you did it. Money's on the line. It's moving up and down and every like pip seems like you're, you're counting the money yeah. in your head or if you have it on your screen, you can see it. Yeah. And like you said, there, there's, especially if you're on a higher time frame, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, what are you going to, and, and and what is one tip going to do in the bigger picture of a four hour candle? Nothing. So like, no. remove yourself from the situation where you can commit errors. Right? It's, it's, it's the same thing. We, you know, I always hear these these reports of like professional athletes and they're getting in trouble at they're getting in bar fights at like three o'clock in the morning. And I always tell myself like, man, if I was a professional athlete and I was making all that money, would I be I'd in never. the bar at three o'clock yeah. in the morning? No. Or like uh, recently there was a guy who was driving 156 miles per hour and like killed some lady and it's like and he, he was you know drunk or whatever like that why would i put myself in the situation where i'm driving right take yourself out of those situations and you remove any chance of yeah. that error and something else i would say if, if you're someone that likes to do reviews if, if you want to kind of build the confidence as soon as that trade is executed go and do your trade review yeah. and we're not talking about PL and anything like that grade yourself on how did I analyze the market? How did I predict? How did I execute? Did I enter the trade I was the way I was supposed to? Did I measure out my risk reward? Did I, you know, take the spread into account? Did I check for high impact yeah. news? And then give yourself that grade, and, and hopefully it's a grade A, like you, it's a, a good trade, and that gives you the confidence where it's like, hey, win yeah. or loss, right? This was a good trade. It Definitely. may win, it may lose. You know your back testing results. You, you never know. Yeah. Um, but so journaling a bit more calm. 
yeah, journaling your trade as close to the trade as possible is going to force you to do that instant self-review, which will then calm you down and make sure that you're, because even if you didn't do it right, at least you've got instant feedback to go, ah, oh, it was me. Uh, and then you can work on something. The other tip that I would share is as soon as you place a trade, just assume the money's gone. Like, yeah. because you shouldn't be trading, <laughs> you shouldn't be trading money that you can't afford to lose anyway. And every risk is a risk. So like, just assume it's gone and then everything can only get better, right? Yeah, yeah. it's like, it's like, the, like, like the casino, right? As soon as, as soon as those chips are in on the table, like they're not your chips anymore. No. You may get them back, you may get more back, but assume that you lost it. Yeah. If you weren't comfortable losing that to begin with, you should have never been at the table. Exactly, it's, it's, exactly. <laughs> anyway, if you're in the comments, let us know what you do to kind of calm your nerves. If you're new to trading or you've just gone through this, um, what do you do? You know, what do you do to calm down or... <laughs> Just, just continuously treat it so it's like it's not having an effect on your mentality or your or your psychology. Um, let us know in the comments. I'll be interested to hear those. And if you guys really have, um, question, yeah. yeah, and if you guys want to share your trading process uh, with us, let us know or any tips that you could um, share with a group on what helps you overcome, you know, some of the kind of gremlins that we face as, as traders. Also let us know if you're a discretionary trader, I'd love, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what your results are. If we've touched on a nerve or maybe you're going, no, I definitely, I'm okay at trading discretionary. I've done it for years. I'd love to hear from you as well. Um, yeah. So hopefully that's valuable. Hopefully that kind of gives you some ideas. Akil, anything else you want to add? No, I would just encourage the traders again to share. Like you said, I know a lot of new traders are watching this video um, every time we do it. And it's different than what you're going to see on most of the internet. Most of the internet, these forums or these groups are filled with people who are trying to mm -hmm. tell you this is the only right way or you're wrong. And, and that discourages a lot of traders from sharing. Um, yeah. We have a very supportive community in it, and that's what we base everything around. I can tell you this. The best thing you can do is not be afraid to ask questions. Put yourself out there. There are some fantabulous traders watching right now in the chat, some great traders that are in the comment below. Use them to your advantage. Ask questions, share ideas, right? Mm. This is just going to help the whole community get better. It's going to help us all become better traders. It's not a competition. It's not us yeah. versus you. I don't know why people make yeah, it we're, like we're, we're not We're not here to segregate a community. We're here to just build a decent community. That's it. Like, I'm not segregating anyone or ruling out anyone's ideas this is just a discussion and i openly uh, encourage all discussions that are constructive and valuable so, so amazing um this is probably going to be the last time we talk to you guys this year because christmas is coming up and next week's very very busy but in the new year we'd plan to be very consistent with these uh hopefully all the colds and coughs go and you know all the craziness of the final quarters out the way and we can get back into the swing. So if you've got any topics you want us to discuss, let us know in the uh, chat or in the comments and we'll gladly tackle those next year. And until then, have a fantastic Christmas and Happy New Year and we'll see you next year. Take care. Thanks for joining us for the Trader Coffee Break. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to never miss a live discussion. Follow our hosts on social media. And remember, do nothing to gain perspective on everything. See you next week.